Psalms chapter 48. A song and psalm for the songs. Yeah. A song and a psalm for the sons of Korah. Again, this is the Levite uh, priest class. They were responsible for the most important thing, the holy thing. And these songs are for them because they have a duty that's special, I guess. I would assume. And maybe the fact is that David may put them in charge. Great is the Lord. It's true. And greatly to be praised in the city of our God. Uh-oh. What city in America is of our God? None. It's Jerusalem. Where the Levites are. Where the temple is. In the mountain of his holiness. And guess what? <clears throat> Jerusalem is a mountain. So when you read in the Gospels, they have to go up to Jerusalem or go down to you know they're in Jerusalem and the Bible says they went down to and they're like well wait a minute that city is up north no they're in a mountain and they gotta go down the mountain to get to where they're going to beautiful for situation and that's what the temple was and that's the spot in Jerusalem where it was beautiful it was the king's home it was the Lord's a uh, dwelling, a place that was ma magnificent, ma magnificent, that was greatest, a place that had to be clean. And if you read the Bible in the Old Testament, you see what nonsense and what idolatry and what filthiness that went into this temple by some of the kings. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. You want to say that today? Man, they've got people over there that don't even recognize that land as Jewish. you got the State Department of America, uh, which I, the video is on my, my Facebook. If you go and check it out, they will not acknowledge Jerusalem. They will beat around the bush and beat around the bush when you question them. The video's on my YouTube. You go check it out. They will not even tell you what the what the capital is. And you think God's going to bless this country? The city of the great David. Nope. Solomon. Nope. That's a capital king. That's the Lord Jesus Christ in his second advent. That is what, listen, when Jesus comes in on the donkey and they're crying, Hosanna. They've got, well, they may not have Psalm 48 in mind, but Psalm 48 is what they have in mind. And I mean is, here comes the king. He's going to wipe out this Roman rule. He's going to clean it all up. He's going to get rid of the Pharisees. He's going to get rid of the Sadducees because they got this burden on us that we can't handle. That's why Jesus said, uh, put your burdens and cares upon me. Listen, those Pharisees said she's had a rule with, with washing plates and, and, and such a hard rule. And then when he didn't conquer the nation, when he's standing before Pilate and Pilate's about to put him to death, that's not what their king was. That's not the Messiah that they, they expected to come. They wanted Rome conquered. And there's, I think it's John chapter 6, where Jesus said he sent them away because he knew that they would make him king. Oh, here's a king that can feed us. We don't need to rely on the Romans. We don't need to lie. Listen, if this guy can feed us and all that, hey, let's make him king. But they forgot about Isaiah 53, the suffering Messiah. Had to come with a cost. He had to come with bloodshed. After all, this king, when he sits down, is the lamb of all lambs. The lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. And that lamb had to be watched. That lamb had to be pure. That lamb had to die. God is known in her 
palaces for a refuge. When life is too much, run to God and hide in Him. Put your trust in your prayers in what your bills when they're overpowering you. And it's only going to get worse in America. A refuge is to get away. There were six cities of refuge for that person that accidentally killed somebody. Today in America they call it manslaughter. Now you were to go, and you weren't to go there as a penalty, realize. You were to go there for protection. Because the person that you accidentally killed, listen, his family, his brother, his mother, his father, were angry. And Jews had a temper. And you could run to these cities and not be killed by the guy's family. And then God put rules that you had to stay there till the high priest died. And you know what? When you run to the refuge of God... You stay there to Jesus Christ as the high priest till he dies. And guess what? The Bible says Jesus Christ is not going to die again. You know what those Jews were supposed to do? They were supposed to run to Jesus Christ, the sacrificial lamb, who by chance was also the high priest. They were to run to him and put their refuge in him, wait for him to die, and then... He could have been their king. Acts chapter 7 with Stephen. For lo, the kings were assembled. They passed by together. They saw it, and so they marveled. They were troubled and hasted away. Fear took hold upon them there, and pain as of a woman in travail. Deep pain, which I don't know in Bible times, if you ever want to do a study, if they even had any relief. Today, they, you know, they, they give a woman a, a needle and, you know, relaxes her. And I don't know what kind of relief they had for a woman back then. It says that Rachel travailed in great pain as she died to give birth to Benjamin. In the Bible, the Bible recognizes as the greatest pain is, as far as living, is a woman in pain and for childbirth. But the greatest pain of all pains to be pains of pains to be is, is to be put into hell in the lake of fire where there's no relief. <clears throat> Ezekiel 27, 26, For thou breakest the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts. In the city of our God, God will establish it forever, Selah. Now you wouldn't think that today, because right now the dumb of the rock is sitting there. But that Selah tells you, hey, Wait till the second advent. And all the world, all the kings come together, the united nuts, to fight against this city. <clears throat> Why is this one little tiny land, about, uh, probably as big as uh, maybe New Jersey in America, why is this land always in the newspaper? Why is everybody always fighting over it? Why is it every time somebody does something to Israel, the United Nuts turn around and say, well, you see nothing. But when Israel strikes back to protect herself, oh, you bad little nation, you wounded a bunch of children in a hospital. The whole world is angry with Israel. And wait till God establish it as the, as the kingdom of all kingdoms, the only kingdom. It says that to those who are do right in the Lord with the, with the talents that God's given them, He'll give them cities. Don't say kingdoms. It says cities. You read in the millennium, there's, there's nations, not kingdoms. There's one kingdom in the millennium, the Lord Jesus Christ. And all nations will have to come to her. 
the city where Jesus is. And if they don't, the Bible says that they won't get rain. Imagine that. You still got that, you know, weather as a judgment of God upon people who won't obey what God says. But let's call it other names, you know. Let's call it Mother Nature. Let's call it El Nemo. Let's call it a fortress. Let's call it anything but God. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord, Jehovah, of the host, in the city of our God, God will establish it forever. So you're going to have a new Jerusalem. You're going to have a new earth given to the Jew. We have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19 for that. God is loving kindness. You wouldn't think that if you go over there today. But they did that to their own selves. They turned around and said, listen, let, let his blood be upon us and our children. God says, okay, that's what you want. You want to reject what I offered to you? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Is that what you want to do to you? You're my people? You don't want me? I'll tell you what, I'll give you a time of trouble. You know, we're told we're not to, you know, spank our children to death. But you realize in the tribulation period that the spanking of Israel, many are going to die. That's how serious God says, but whosoever believeth on my son shall not perish. And those who have not the son shall not see life. Whosoever's name was not written in the, in the book shall be cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. How serious Jesus Christ when he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, that God's people, the Jews during the tribulation, are going to be killed left and right, up and down, north and south, east and west, and they're going to go into the lake of fire. All because they rejected Jesus Christ. According to thy name, O God, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, so is thy praise, Unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand. Well there's one at the right hand of God. Jesus. Is full of righteousness. So if you go to John chapter 1. It says Jesus is full of mercy. Full of truth. Here he's full of righteousness. Full. That means you can't put any unrighteousness into him. If you're full. Matter of fact, he's so full of righteousness, he spills it over unto us. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Now, I'm going to take the Bible as it says. I don't know how this is going to happen. And I say this, and I've always said it. I read, I read in, in passages, the Bible says in the millennium, the trees are going to clap their hands. I'm really going to take, I take that literal. Now, I don't know how a mountain rejoices. I don't know how a tree would clap its hands, but you know what? The earth has been in a curse for how many years because of Adam? Don't you think it would be so glad the day when the Lord removes that curse off the earth? When, th when thorns are not on roses no more, and you don't need fertilizer, and you don't need bug spray, and what you put in the ground will grow within three seconds after it's planted in the ground, and... The only thing that has the curse remaining is the snake. Ezekiel says he's still going to eat the dust of the ground. Everything else is really... Like imagine animals bringing forth uh, their little baby animals with no pain. You imagine we, we talked about here a woman that has pain in childbirth. She will not have pain in childbirth. Imagine that. Imagine no diseases in trees. A complete tree full of fruit. An apple that has no curse on it. Can you imagine what that's going to taste like? With God's riches. Imagine a tomato in the, in the millennium. What that's going to be like with, with no worm in it. No, no curse. Let the daughters of Judah be glad. Why Judah? Because that's the city where the, that's the tribe that the Lord Jesus Christ comes into. That is the region where the Lord Jesus Christ goes into. 
Judah is, is overwhelmed with Jerusalem, but it's actually Benjamin that gets the land. The king comes in and, and gets Jebusai, conquers Jebusai, the city, and claims it for himself. But that land is really Benjamin's. But it's the home of the king. David, Solomon, Jesus Christ. Because of thy judgments. Why would Judah be glad because of the judgment? They had been getting so mistreated, so unjust treatment from the world today. Can you imagine the day when Jesus sits on his throne and the person and the two people standing before him and God knows which one is right and God knows which one is wrong and the one that is wrong gets penalized rightfully. He's full of righteousness, it said. Listen, you don't want to stand before Jesus as a judge because if you're guilty, you are guilty and no matter what. Walk about Zion. Go round about her. Tell the towers there. Go walk around the city and count the towers. That's what it's telling you. Walk the entire gate. Mark ye well her bul bulwarks. Consider her palaces, that ye may tell it to the generations following. A father sits down with his children and say, Children, when we went to Jerusalem last time, or when I went back in Jerusalem and back at this time, and you, me and your grandpa, we walked around the city, and you don't believe there is. X Mount Tower, and you won't believe that this one section of wall, when the sun rises up on it, it is so beautiful, and you come through the gate, and you see Jesus sitting there, and how wonderful it is, and you see the temple is there, and all the priests are going about the thing, boy, son, when you come with us this year, now is your time to come with us three times a year, when we go there, you won't believe how beautiful it is. See, the, the, the prophets say, you're not going to tell people about, hey, you know, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to know about Jesus. No. Everybody's going to know about Jesus. He's there. What are you going to tell them? You won't believe how beautiful that city is. And the Bible says Gentiles are going to come to the Jews, and they're going to grab hold of the Jews and say, we're going to go with you to the city where Jesus is. And you, you tell them about the city as you walk there. Isn't that what Jesus did with the the two ro two men two road, the two men in the road Emmaus? And those two men didn't even understand until they sat down and had a meal with Jesus. Then they understood. It's going to be a wonder. It's going to be a great thing to see the Lord Jesus Christ and to be in His city. Mark ye well her uh, bullets. Consider her palaces that ye may tell it to the generation following. It is up to you to tell your children. It's not being done today. For this God is our God forever and ever. Now this whole thing has been Jewish. He will be our guide even unto death. And people will die in the millennium. They're going to die here. Listen, this psalm present is the, the is the kingdom where Solomon's at or built. The city of David, the city of, of Solomon. And yet it's millennium. And how wonderful. It says in, in Solomon's time that silver was as rocks. Can you picture that? Can you have fun with that? David was a shepherd boy. He had a slingshot. He carried rocks with him. He practiced shooting cans and whatever he could shoot. And he defended the animals, defended his sheep and all that. And had fun with his slingshot. Can you imagine boys in Jerusalem picking up stones and just flinging them with their slingshot because they're just like stones. I bet you, the, I bet you some of the Gentiles are like, hey, hit me with a rock. Hit me with a rock. Give me some of that silver. How wonderful it was in the time of Solomon and how wonderful it's going to be in the millennium and without sin. And the thing is, you know what, you know what Solomon's sin was? 
He had a lot of wives, didn't he? Well, let me ask you a question. As compared to today, right now, doesn't Jesus have a lot of wives? Until we get put into one body? Jesus has got a wife all over the world. And you know what? Some of those wives worship Easter. Some of them wives offer, worship Christmas. Some of those wives, you know, worship Baal. Some of those wives, right? 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 It's interesting. But the one wife he sets apart is that uh, Egyptian wife. And the first one that in the Bible that got saved, the way you got saved, is a black man from Africa. Reading a track in a, in a chariot. That Philip made sure he, he knew the Lord Jesus Christ before he would become a water. I mean, before he would get saved. This is the Jerusalem then. And the Jerusalem yet to come. This is the same Jerusalem that Jesus Christ walked in. The King. Capital K. And they didn't want to have anything to do with him. Oh Lord my God. When I in awesome wonder. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art.